service to others and service to self. In the grand scheme of things, these seem to be the most useful terms to sort and order our understanding of reality. And the reason I say that is, is because if you think back, if you reflect on reality in a rational, logical way, and you think back to the very beginning of things, and you think that everything is all one, okay? Well, just as with a, uh, a cell, if you have just one cell, that cell will divide into two. So if you have just one, the first division, and this is why numbers are important, the first division is two. So you have two. And those divisions, more or less, of necessity, must be on and off, yes and no, black and white, good and evil, or whatever. Okay? So you start out with that, and then you, you bring it down through various levels of density and so forth, and, and we're here in our world where all these things are mixed up. So we're trying to sort things out, whether they are good or evil. Well, the ancient uh, Celtic idea of good and evil was that there is good and there is evil, and there is the third force, the specific situation that determines which is which. Because there are situations when doing one thing is good, and there are other situations where doing the same thing is evil. Okay? And the question becomes service to others or service to self. You can then you know, further define it in those terms. Uh, there is another way of looking at it, which is uh, what Gurdjieff described as you know, the, the issue of manipulation. If you do anything towards another person with the idea of covertly or secretly manipulating that person to do something that benefits you particularly or solely, that is evil. That is service to self. Okay? Uh, but there are other situations where you can, where it's necessary for you to not be entirely direct with a person. Uh, Gurdjieff tells a story in his book, Meetings with Remarkable Men, about uh, taking ordinary sparrows and painting them with dye to turn them into little fake canaries that he was then selling to the tourists as canaries to make enough money to support his, his uh, group of adventurers who were out there in Siberia somewhere or Kazakhstan or Afghanistan searching for the truth. Okay, so he was, in a sense, he was lying to people and he was manipulating these people to buy these canaries, these fake canaries. Now, a lot of people have made a lot of negative remarks about that, but the fact is, is he had a goal that was beyond himself, which was to support his, you know, he was in desperate times. They didn't have food to eat, they didn't have money to travel, and he was out in the middle of God knows where. They had to get out of there and they had to continue their search because what he was trying to do was for the benefit of all humanity. So in this situation, his little ruse, his little game, uh, whether it actually happened or whether he was just telling the story to make the point, was for the benefit of others. Therefore, it was good, even though the immediate event, the interaction with the particular individuals, could be said to have been bad. Okay? So he was acting in a way that served others, not himself. Of course, his survival was important in order for his group to survive, in order for this work that he was trying to do to survive. So in a sense, the service to others was also helping him. He was an other among the being served. So looking at, at the situations as to where, whether something serves yourself or serves others is an important way to look at our reality. But always remember, there's good, and there's evil, and there's the specific situation, the parameters that determine which is which. <laughs>